Today on The Charge Up, men's soccer makes history over Southern, field hockey returns to the win column, women's soccer takes down Franklin Pierce, and it's week three of our bold predictions. Grab a seat and stick around. The Charge Up starts now. Like Hannah Montana goes like the sweet life. Hello. That was great. Hey everyone, welcome into this week's edition of The Charge Up. I'm Gio Gomez and with me as always is Deshanae Andrews and Lindsay Miller. What is up ladies? We had a good week of sports, huh? It was a great week. We had a lot of wins. A lot of big wins this week. All right, let's get rolling. Volleyball hosted a three-team tri-match this weekend, falling to Lemoyne College in five sets in the opener before taking down Mercy College three sets to one in the nightcap. The Chargers are now nine and six and sit in fifth place in the Northeast 10 Conference standings. What did you see from the Chargers this weekend and what can the team do to move up in the conference? Well, I can definitely say that the team is definitely showing great like chemistry with each other. They're learning how to work with each other. They're learning how to play together as a team. And I think as, as long as they keep doing that, I think that they'll keep racking in wins. They actually had three games this week. Um, they won against Bridgeport and Mercy, but then they fell to Lemoyne, and that was kind of interesting because they've been on such a nice win streak for the last few games. But, you know, the game was back and forth all game. It was New Haven, Lemoyne, New Haven, Lemoyne, and then they just, at the end, they couldn't hold on for the win. Well, you know, they've had a streak, and every, you know, a streak's got to end at some point, but the fact that they've still had a you know good win in there and a winning record in that is still good. Might be able um, to bring them back, too, and take away a little bit of their confidence so they actually don't get overconfident and actually have that end up hurting them. That's good. That's true. Mentioning with what you're saying with the team chemistry, a, a good thing that they're doing is, is spreading the wealth, you know. There's not just one player that's a big star that's taking over, right. that's getting all the attention. Each week, everybody's working together, really, and and you know each working together as a unit instead of just like one one big player so completely agreed we have Kaylee Greathead which had a career high of 29 digs versus Mercy and I think she's really also racking in and helping with that same team chemistry speaking of career games Sammy Pagia had a career game a career high you know 31 assists so that's really good I'm, I'm just thinking you know you come on the show you get interviewed I mean who knows? It's looking pretty good for them. So. Yeah, she definitely puts up some big numbers for a freshman. I can definitely say that. With freshmen stepping up like that, it's no wonder they've been having such a good streak. Right. I'm hoping to see more wins come out of them for sure. Oh, yeah. Volleyball will close out a five-game homestead Tuesday when they host Pace University at Charger Gymnasium. First serve is scheduled for 7 p.m. Field hockey took a thrilling double overtime victory at St. Michael's College Saturday 2-1. The Chargers are now 5-8 overall, but with all five wins coming against conference opponents, the team stands in fifth place in the Northeast 10. How can the Chargers continue to build momentum heading into the later stages of the regular season? I think even though they're a new team, they're definitely making their mark in the NE10 conference. I think whatever they're doing, as far as even if it's going over game footage and like figuring out what's right, what's wrong, what's working, whatever they're doing, they need to keep that same momentum in the conference and they can continue to make their mark. And I think that the little stuff that they are improving on and have been working on in practice and stuff is really paying off for them. Um, you can see it in their win against St. Michael's. They won that in overtime, 2-1. to one. So that just showed that they really were there to play and they wanted to fight and they really did want that win and they ended up getting it. Yeah, especially overtime victories. You know, it's not just physical. It's a lot of mental and emotional, you know, not just giving up. So the fact that they won that, it's a, it's a big deal. And, you know, they might have trouble with ranked opponents, but they're winning the games they need to win with conference. They have five conference wins right now, so that's pretty good. So if they can just continue winning the games they have to, I, I, 
I, I think they could do pretty well. And maybe it's not a year for them to win the conference, but you know, maybe it's a great building year for them where they can set that structure for themselves so that in future years that they can come out and they can win the conference and do other stuff like that. It's something to build off of. So definitely the fact that now the momentum is picking up for them. Now they realize, okay, this is what we have to do to win. This is what we don't do and stuff like that. I think that that's really helping them. So we, we look forward to seeing what comes out of this team. Yeah, like you said, they're a new team. A lot of new teams or rebuild teams, you know, they take a while to really build up and get there. So you don't expect championship wins immediately from a, a brand new team. But the fact that they're finally gaining that momentum and making conference wins, that's good. You know, it's, it's a promising sign. And maybe they won't win it this year, but the next year or the year after that, that might be... You know, I hope they do win, uh, just, yeah, to make the, just, yeah, obviously. just to well, make yeah. that <laughs> mark I'm not as a they, new team. Just that they won't, uh, you know. Right, it, but I think it would be like spectacular if they do win and make that mark as a new team, especially showing other teams in the school that as a new team, this is what they're still bringing to the table. I think it will be great for UNH. I definitely agree. Field hockey will return to Ralph De Delacamer Stadium Wednesday when they host St. Thomas Aquinas College at 1 p.m. The game against Stack will be the Chargers breast cancer awareness game as well. <laughs> Women's soccer took down Franklin Pierce on Saturday 2-1 for the team's second conference win of the year. The team currently sits at 3-8-1 on the season. How can the Chargers look to make a push down the stretch? Well, you know, their victory over Franklin Pierce brought them to a record of 2-1 and one in the conference. And if you look at their conference record, things look to be going good for the Chargers. I mean, that's not looking at their entire record. But, I mean, and like we've been talking about for like the last two weeks, they weren't taking any shots on goal. This last game against Franklin Pierce, they took 18 shots on goal and scored two goals. So, there you go. Let's keep pushing the ball down the field and getting the ball toward the net, not even just in the net, but just keep taking those shots and keep opening those doors for opportunities for themselves. I definitely have to agree with her when she said about taking the shot and just moving the ball down. I think now that they're taking possession and not working so much on their defense, but on their offense, I think it's really helping with the scores and we can see that. And like you said, you know, if you take a step back, while the record might not be great, the conference record's pretty good. And you know, if they just play well down the stretch, that's all that's important. Early in the season, you know, it's big. It's it's important to get wins. Obviously, it's always important to get wins. But as long as you're winning late in the stretch and later in the season, when it's you know playoff time and things are gearing up, that's all that matters. So they still got a chance. They've still got a fighting chance. So you know. As far as like taking risk, even junior Jenna Paduzzi had her first goal for UNH and that was also a risk that she took and made it. So there you go. Risk clearly are working for this team. And um, Samantha Roth was also um, New Haven's athlete, one of New Haven's athlete of the week, and she scored the game-winning goal against Franklin Pierce. So between her and Jenna, the two of them really just combined for a great game. So yeah, you know, they're heating up, they're taking chances, it's good. So hopefully this is a sign of them and the team they're going to be down the stretch because, you know, there's two different teams. There's the team the first half of the year and there's a team the second half of the year. So it's, it's really still important. a chance. Yeah, yeah, it's really important for them to keep building and moving forward. Yep, Most like, definitely. You know, really changed their look now, so that's good. So women's soccer will have a full week off before they host Lemoyne College on Saturday at Kathy Zolan Stadium. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. <laughs> Men's soccer made history last Wednesday when they took down crosstown rival Southern Connecticut State University 2-0 at home. The win was the first victory over Southern since 1984 and the first conference win in 2019. How can the Chargers look to keep winning this week? I was very excited when I heard that this was the first time that we ever won over Southern. I think that this momentum as far as like such a good thing happening for them can really be like a driving force to see more wins for the season. So I hope that they keep that same momentum, they keep that same drive that had them to overcome that one obstacle. I definitely think that part of the drive that came for that game for them was the fact that their head coach was, we talked about this last week, was the coach at Southern Connecticut before he coached at New Haven. So I think that the boys were all fired up and ready to go for that game just because they knew what the stakes of that game were. Yeah, that's a good point. Hopefully they can coach like that and get that same motivation from games that aren't that personal. You know, it's important to be that driven up all the time, not just for you know, personal games, but for games that are nothing or games that against other opponents. It shouldn't just be like 
we're playing against a team that means something to us, so we're going to play better than usual. It should always be like that. Right, and I think next week they're playing post, and our history with post is that we've had 12 wins against them, but our last one was a loss. So I'm hoping that they take the drive from winning against Southern and use that same drive to keep that momentum and win against post. I mean, this game against Southern shows that they definitely do have the drive within them to be a great team, but they just need to figure out how to keep bringing that for their next games. I mean, it's cliche to talk about momentum, but it's obviously a big factor in sports. You know, it's not just the physical aspect. You need the emotional and the, the mental drive, too. So, we can, you know, this is a big momentum win, and hopefully it'll drive them forward and they keep that momentum going. So Agreed. New Haven will return to Kathy Zolan Stadium Tuesday afternoon when they host Post University. Kickoff in this non-conference bout is scheduled for 3.30 p.m. Football dropped another game under the lights, falling to St. Anselm College Saturday night in New Hampshire, 37-31. With the loss, the Chargers fall to 3-3 on the year and 2-2 in conference play. What went wrong for the Chargers and how can they look to bounce back? I really think that the Chargers are going through a bit of a change and getting used to the change with having um, different quarterbacks and trying to figure out like the feel of the game. So I think that if they just keep playing and keep practicing and keep working to build that team chemistry, then we can see that resulted on the field. I also feel like at this point they need to make a decision about a quarterback, though. They need to either work with one or the other, but I feel like this going back and forth thing for them is very confusing for the rest of their offense. I mean, last game Christian Lupoli did have a good game. He was 17 for 30 and totaled for 247 passing yards, so he had a pretty good time, time connecting and stuff. But um, they, they let a lot of um, touchdowns in in the fourth quarter, and that really hurt them. Yeah, quarterback controversies are never really good. You know, you need a quarterback, one set in place to either have them lead the team or rally around. It's not good to keep switching back and forth because then that not only switches you know, the dynamics because two different quarterbacks, two different play styles, two different ways you call the plays. So like you can't keep switching back and forth. You, have, you do have to make that decision. Right. I'm very excited about this next game, though. It's against Southern. We have a, a history of winning against Southern. But as of right now, Southern and New Haven have the same hold in the conference, the same um, conference record so I hope that we can keep that energy that we have with Southern on winning for this next game because we really need it I definitely agree you know earlier I talked about with field hockey winning the, that they were winning the games they had to and I feel like a problem with our football team right now is that I don't know if it's just the team's not the heads are not in the right place or just they're having trouble during these games but it seems like they're not winning the games they should or the games that that seem like they don't matter to them like this team they that they just lost to hadn't even won a game yet and we should have done way better than we did but we just kind of let it slip so I think that's I don't know if that's a, a talent thing or a mental thing but hopefully we can start winning the games that we should win and not play down to our competition I definitely think it's a mental thing for them though because they have again proven themselves and showed that they can step up and they can be components in this big game in these big games but they just don't seem like they're really into it in the last few games. Hopefully they can figure out a way to get themselves out of this little like bubble that they're in and push forward to the future. Agreed. Yeah, last week I mentioned they were a first half team and again it kind of reared its head. So hopefully these last two losses will really jog jagger their heads and make them, you know, want to play harder and prove themselves. Definitely. So football will return to the field this Saturday when they make the tr short trip to Southern Connecticut State University for the 2019 installment of the Elm City Rivalry. Kickoff is set for 2.30 p.m. All right, it's time for our bold predictions. Let's go through last week's predictions. Lindsay, how'd you do? I did great on my oh bold my prediction. God. I predicted that men's soccer would um, defeat Southern, and that's absolutely what they did. Did you get into specifics, though, or did you just say they were going to win? Um, well, I just said that they were going to break the 35-year drought and finally beat Crosstown Rival, and that's exactly what happened. All right, fine. I'll give it to you. All right, Deshanae, what about you? So, I didn't do all around perfect, but I will take half a point for my Ooh, last week's bold prediction. I don't know if we give out half points. We yes. definitely give out half points. I took a half point for my prediction last week. She's getting Thank one this you. week. We're and giving... Actually, you know... I'll prove it to you. My... my 
my bold prediction last week was that we'd win by 17 points and that Shamar Logan would have 125 running yards. Do you know how much he had? 180. I think I deserve my half point. I mean, it wasn't exactly what it was, so I don't, I don't know. It was more than that. He exceeded my expectations, and I think he will continue to do so. So I'm going to take my half point for this week. Thank you. <laughs> You're not welcome. Um, How was yours? <clears throat> so, okay, I might... I, if, we're, if we're giving out half points here, I'm going to take a few half points. You have to prove it. Yeah, let's hear it. I have to it. prove it. All right. I predicted that they'd go 3-0. and oh. They went for volleyball. They went 2-1. and one. So I'll give myself a half point there. You don't get a half point for that. I don't get a half point for that? No. Okay. Also, mm. I predicted that the setters would combine for 150 assists. assists. They combined for 150 or 130. So. All right, you're okay. I was you know close. What? I, was you, you I don't think getting, you should get a half you're point. Getting, I don't think he deserves a half point. Either. Can I get a quarter but point? Your predictions nope. are definitely improving. So maybe your next predictions week. are improving, but you don't deserve a half. I point. think I think the score is one and a half, one and a half to zero, but. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? Let's, Let's just fix it. How about this? For this week, I'm predicting that uh, field hockey will get a win. I'm just going. I'm going straight bold. If I'm zero two, I'm just going for it. I think they're going to get a win. I'm not going to get into the specifics. Because I'm already losing, but I'm just going to say they're winning. And if they don't, I'm 0-3, whatever. What do you guys got? Okay, my bold prediction is that since men's soccer came out and beat Southern, they're going to win their next three conference games. All right, my, I'm going to go with volleyball. I'm saying that volleyball is going to beat Pace in a three-to-one in a three to one set um, because 19 of their last 21 matchups have been won by New Haven, so I feel like this is a very safe Bold prediction for bold prediction for me. Mm, yeah. Well, you know what? I hope you both lose horribly. I hope these are awful. Okay. We'll talk next week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We will. Or well, in two weeks. Two we weeks. got a we got a break that's coming it. up. So that's a wrap for the show this week. Check out NewHavenChargers.com for the most up to date information on our favorite teams. And for all your news on campus, log on to ChargerBulletin.com. I'm Lindsay Miller. I'm Destiny Andrews. And I'm Gio Gomez. And we'll see you next week on. The, the charge, charge up. up.